Hello everyone. Welcome to Software Testing Expert Talk series. Today we have a guest who has nearly 20 years of experience in software development and testing in IT industry so far. Plus, he is a handling a role of solution architect and testing advocate at one of the most prestigious organization across the world. Based on feedback he received every single day, he is responsible for defining the features that will ease the task of quality assurance for software teams. He is a technology passionate advocate of new technologies, frameworks, languages, methodologies, processes, and is responsible for exploring prototyping and subsequently explain and work with different development teams in the organization on their implementation. As a fervent, dynamic and social team leader, he is capable of integrating distinct technologies and systems in the most complex scenarios. Not only this much in his introduction, he owns a domain on his name where he blogs about software testing and agile process. I will not take more time in introducing our guest for today's estate session. Our guest is Sergio Fryer. Welcome to our show, Sergio. Hi, AJ. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending our show today. It was, <laughs> it is really exciting to be here. All right, Sergio. Thanks for saying that. Uh, today, Sergio will take us through a test management tool named as X-Ray, where he will make us understand the core concepts of X-Ray, how it works and how we can use it and how to integrate test automation with X-Ray, plus how to combine and consolidate scripted testing with exploratory testing. Let's hear directly from him. Over to you, Sergio. Thank you, thank you. So let me share my screen with all of you. Okay. Okay, can you, is it okay? Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay, great. So uh, today I want to talk how we can leverage the power of your testing with X-Ray. And um, uh, I'm here to, to not just talk about X-Ray, but talk a bit about also testing and talk about the different uh, approaches to testing. And of course, how you can take advantage of X-Ray in order to uh, achieve a, a better quality process. All right. So this, uh, these are the, the takeaways that I, um, I want you to take from, from this session. And first of all, uh, I would love to explain uh, the core concepts of X-Ray because X-Ray provides uh, different kinds of entities that can be used for uh, different pur purposes. And sometimes uh, you'll find that it provides multiple entities for the same, prop uh, for the same pro um, purpose. Uh, even though um, this, the, the, the entities may provide slightly different capabilities. I uh, want to also mention uh, a bit about uh, coverage because that's a really important aspect uh, about X-Ray and how you can use it in your own advantage to have, a, let's say, um, a more clear uh, insight about the status of your, uh, of, of your project and the, your deliverables. Mm -hmm. um, as, as mentioned earlier, uh, nowadays we have plenty of test automation, all sorts of frameworks, uh, and I will try to showcase um, different test automation frameworks and how you can integrate that with X-Ray using also different CI CD tools. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be great if I wouldn't mention exploratory testing. So uh, uh, I will be uh, I will be showcasing a bit about how to perform exploratory testing and uh, at the same time how to have visibility of the uh, of the outputs of exploratory testing in Jira using X-ray. Mm -hmm. And during this process. I will cover a bit about the different uh, capabilities that X-Ray uh, provides that allow you to fine tune 
it in order to meet the demands, the specific demands of your teams, because every single team is different, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some teams want more, uh, to have more uh, rigorous processes. Some teams want to work a bit more light. Mm -hmm. And X-Ray gives you that flexibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and and now, yeah. yeah. And now, before before yeah. moving forward, uh, uh, I have a question, Sergio. Like, uh, as you know, there are many test management tools available in the market. Then, why should one opt for X-ray and, and how it is different from other tools in the market? That's an excellent question. In fact, there are plenty of tools, and I, I guess that every single year appears like more one or two tools out there. And the thing about X-ray is that. Uh, X-ray exists for for um, several years, and it was born directly from the need uh, of um, being flexible in order to support uh, teams that could be either working in more and waterfall kind of scenarios, but also teams that wanted to become more agile. And uh, X-ray uh, was born with that in mind to support test automation from the start, to support uh, Cucumber and other BDD frameworks also from, from the start. Mm -hmm. And you, the thing that is built into uh, Ejira is something that is quite uh, good in my perspective because um, it clearly um, close the gap between developers and testers because uh, you got everyone working uh, with the same tool in the same place where everyone that is working uh, in, the, in the scope of the project mm -hmm. is already there. So it's easily to co collaborate. And if we compare it with other tools out there and uh, even for Jira, there are a bunch of tools, um, but you'll see that X-Ray it's, it's a, I would say, a cooler tool because it's easier to integrate it with uh, uh, tons of test automation frameworks. You can implement, uh, you can adapt it to your own needs, which, as I uh, as I explain it, are different from team to team. And at the same time, bring the best of breath uh, from exploratory testing and combine it with your uh, typical manual testing and uh, test automation effort. All right, let's look at it. And, and that's and that that point is actually one one of the aspects that I wanted to talk. So, whenever we talk about testing, uh, I remember back in the old times. Uh, I remember working with uh, one uh, silo tool uh, QC that everyone probably knows, or most of uh, of uh, us that have some more. Uh, more time in this world, I know. Um, and back then, people are more more working with uh, traditional test cases composed of plenty of steps, and that is part of scripted testing. That's that's still a, a valid approach for uh, covering, let's say, the known knowns in our products. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say a a better way probably of doing that, or instead of going doing the, uh, the steps manually is to use test automation scripts in order to achieve the same, exactly the same results, while at the same time give, um, give uh, the, the, the team members more time for doing things where they can actually get more value from, like exploratory testing. Because we need to have time in order to explore uh, the product and find things that we Warrant expecting because you know uh, it comes from system uh, thinking. Uh, everything that we have uh, in the in the product uh, interacts with other places in the product, and we cannot just look at a single feature in isolation. So we need to really explore in order to find uh, and to deal with unexpected risks. And mm -hmm. no matter the type of approach that you that you choose for your testing. Well, X-ray uh, can 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 is able to to address these these different flavors. Uh, so it it is great because while you are moving from traditional test cases to test automation to exploratory testing, uh, while you are doing that process, 
uh, X-ray can, can help you out and support uh, all the approaches related to testing. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what is X-ray? So X-ray um, is a Jira uh, app or a Jira plugin. Uh, it supports cloud uh, and on-prem uh, Jira instances. Uh, while in Jira server and data center, it's something that is deployed onto the servers. In cloud, uh, it's, it, it seems like it's been deployed onto the Jira cloud infrastructure, but it actually it's deployed in our own infrastructure and it talks with the, the um, Jira cloud infrastructure. But in, the, in essence, it's a Jira plugin, okay? And it covers, as I mentioned, scripted and exploratory testing, and you can use it to organize, to plan, and execute tests. And uh, of course, and because uh, every single uh, software has bugs, to also report bugs and track the, those bugs and how they, uh, they relate to, 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 the, to the requirements through a complete uh, traceability that is provided in X-Ray. Mm -hmm. But, one of the aspects that I mentioned is a, this, a, this aspect of coverage, which is, which is an, an heuristic, okay? Remember that there isn't like 100% coverage. That's something impossible to have because uh, we cannot really uh, figure out all possible usages of our software. Um, but there's a, this, this heuristic in X-Ray that gives you, uh, give you like a, insight about the, um, the quality based on the testing results that you reported for the related tests, no matter uh, which approach you choose to follow. And okay. then X-Ray uh, provides this REST API that is great for people that wish to integrate with the uh, uh, CI CD tools or even right from the, their own uh, uh, desktop computer or from the mainframes that allow them to uh, report easily results and even interact with X-ray entities. And finally, the last point that I think that is uh, important that I've seen uh, people love it is that it's customization friendly. In other words, you you can adapt it to your own needs. So uh, we'll see uh, ahead that this is mainly possible because X-Ray uses different issue types um, for abstracting different testing entities. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the core entities, they are abstracted as different issue types, such, such as tests uh, for test cases or test ideas or automated tests preconditions as an abstraction of some initial case. Mm -hmm. Then we have the test set, which is an issue for um, for grouping uh, tests. Mm -hmm. And um, um, then we have the test plan for implementing, uh, let's say a plan for your testing. Mm -hmm. And this can be used, for example, as a way to group the results from multiple iterations. Mm -hmm. And then you, each time that you run a bunch of tests, you have to uh, schedule uh, what we call a test execution, which is like a task for running a bunch of tests. And okay. all of these entities are issues, are going to be issues in Jira. So that means that basically you handle them in the same in the same way as you handle other issues in Jira, in terms of permissions, in terms of uh, the ability to add custom fields, to customize screens. Uh, eventually, you can leave comments. You can attach uh, uh, files to 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 these issues, and thus facilitate interaction and collaboration uh, within the team. Okay, uh, Sergio, I saw one uh, block here named as organized. So I just want to know, like, uh, how does X-ray organize testing artifacts? <laughs> that's that's uh, an excellent question, also because. Uh, what you are seeing here with the test set is that uh, the test set is a, as I mentioned, is a is a way for you to organize tests in flat lists mm -hmm. as an issue. So it has a that advantage. It's an issue, so you can assign it to someone if you want to have like this control over a, a certain group of tests. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, some years ago, um, with the version three of the X-ray actually. Mm -hmm. The test repository concept and the corresponding board for the test plan 
that I will uh, mention, um, provides, let's say, a folder uh, kind of organization for tests. So it's an alternate approach for more visual kind of approach where you can organize tests within folders. And then you can use those folders as a means to easily create a plan, to, to easily create a test execution for them. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say that the test repository uh, way of organizing tests, mm -hmm. which is not an issue, it's some internal entity to each project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's um, a more, um, it's an approach that scales better and also that it's more easier and uh, probably more fun to use than using test sets. But we we actually have people that love the two different approaches and well, with X-Ray, you can choose one of the other approach. Mm -hmm. And the same applies also for the plan. For example, the plan is like a flat list of tests that you wish to track in the scope of a version or, of a, or, or a sprint, for example. Mm -hmm. And you can track the results from all those iterations, but then the plan also has like an, an hierarchical organization where you can track the progress of those tests using folders and use those folders in the, as a means to easily schedule execution for some of these tests that are being part of this plan. So we have different ways. We have a way to organize the tests um, in lists one, to organize the tests at the project level using uh, folders. But also, if you want, uh, even though this is more from a planning perspective, the test plan has its own internal way for organizing uh, the tests also uh, in, uh, in folders, and the, uh, it's called the board of the plan. Mm -hmm. So X-Ray, you have this kind of flexibility that you can either choose to e either use one or or the other one. Mm -hmm. All these entities, in fact, you can just use a subset of them or mm -hmm. all of them. So that's why uh, I mentioned earlier that it's flexible in that it adapts to the team needs and sometimes people start using one, some entities, sometimes then afterwards when they find other entities that are more suitable to their process, they start using others. All right, all right. yeah. Okay, so let me go beat a bit more on the concepts mm -hmm. and one of the concepts that i want to talk a bit about is on requirements mm -hmm. for let's say legacy reasons we uh, we start calling them requirements but nowadays we call them issues that you coverable issues issues that you can cover with tests so mm -hmm. any issue that you wish to cover with tests we call it generic requirement, but let's say in strict sense, uh, they don't need to be requ requirements as such, mm -hmm. okay? But so giving you a, uh, some concrete examples, let's say a story can be a, a requirement, can be a, in this sense, can be an issue that you can cover with tests. Uh, and X-Ray also understands this relation between uh, this hierarchical relation between stories and epics. So if you do cover, uh, testing for the stories, you can track the, those results and that covers at the epic level automatically, okay? Mm -hmm. But sometimes you may have your own issue types in Jira. So sometimes you, have, you see teams using features, uh, themes, or even bugs. So uh, I, I know that some of our teams use, for example, they also cover bug uh, issues with tests. So in that sense, they cover, they define those issues as being coverable uh, by tests. So um, we treat them similar to user stories. And I mentioned a bit earlier coverage and this topic of coverage, whenever we talk about coverage, people um, think about uh, different things. Sometimes people think about code coverage. Sometimes people think about test coverage or requirement mm -hmm. coverage, it, it means, uh, depends. What is coverage from an X-ray perspective? And this is also something unique, at least on the on the test management tools that you have for Jira, mm -hmm. that you only find out in some, you find out this in some, you, you only find this on in some other, let's say legacy tools outside of a Jira world. Uh, that gives some kind of similar capability, but I would say not the same. So the idea here is that 
you have a requirement, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that requirement can be okay on version one, mm -hmm. and that requirement can be not okay on version two because eventually someone broke something, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that um, depends on the results that you report, uh, both for version one and for version two. Mm -hmm. So with coverage analysis on X-ray, you can analyze the status of your requirements of your uh, issues in JIRA, give, having in mind the results that you report for spe some specific version. And then you can decide, okay, this is okay for version one, but these requirements are not okay for version two. And this, that is automatically calculated based on the, all the testing results. And sometimes you want to make this analysis based on, for let's say, for a given browser, for mm -hmm. example, uh, you may want to uh, analyze whether your user stories are okay or not okay for Chrome or for, for, for Firefox, for example. Mm -hmm. And X-Ray gives you also the possibility of analyzing your coverage, having in mind just the results that you reported for Chrome or for Firefox or uh, for a different uh, operating system, use, if you use like an operating system as an environment, okay? So an environment is a way for you to flag the results, but that gives you later on the ability to analyze the results from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So all of these are perspectives. Even if you want, you can analyze the, how are your requirements, just giving in mind, having in mind the results that you have reported for uh, some given test plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is quite useful for you to take whenever you need to decide to um, whether to make a release or not based on the testing results. Once again, this is an heuristic. So it means that it's fallible because it's only, uh, it only takes into account what you report. It doesn't take into account what you, you didn't report, what you didn't test, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you see a user story okay, it means that it's okay having in mind the results that you report. It doesn't mean that it's like 100% okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving, moving ahead. Mm -hmm. In terms of organization, mm -hmm. and I will show briefly a demo with uh, all of this, but in terms of organization in Jira, you have like a project that, it, and then for, for that project, you're gonna have multiple versions uh, in Jira. They, uh, Jira calls sometimes called these releases mm -hmm. and assigned to each version, you're gonna have uh, requirements or user stories or epics issues that you wish to cover with tests. Mm -hmm. And then uh, this is basically how coverage is defined is through this linkage between tests and the uh, epics and the user stories. Mm -hmm. From a planning perspective, you you're gonna you're gonna have test plans. So a test plan is is like a way for you to define the scope of your testing, what you wish to test in the scope of a, a version, for example. Mm -hmm. So you build out a plan, you add the test to the plan, and what the plan will do is actually uh, aggregate the results from multiple iterations. So each time that you run, let's say, let's run all the tests now. You're gonna have like one test execution for that then you probably will have another revision of the code. You'll create another test execution to test it. Sometimes you run all the tests. Sometimes you run just a few, few of them. And what the test plan will show you is like the consolidated results. Like what is the, for each test that is being tracked within the plan, what, what was the latest result reported for it? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want, and here is where flexibility also plays a, a part, mm -hmm. uh, you can also bring the planning level to the sprint. So mm -hmm. since the test plans, as I mentioned earlier, they are issues, that means that you can assign them to the sprint and deal with them as any other work, uh, as any other artifact that you have to deal in the scope of the sprint. And well, you can have like one test plan, for example, for the old version or for the old sprint, mm -hmm. and that's fine. But sometimes people want to uh, segregate, to differentiate, let's say, for example, the security tests from the performance tests, or they may they wish to, or they may may prefer to separate the 
the test automation from the other types of tests. It depends. It depends how, how these tests are managed. It depends also on the relevance of these tests. But with X-Ray, you have this flexibility. It's a bit up to the teams to decide how many test plans uh, to create. And if they want to assign them to the sprints, it's fine. The kind of tests that you wish to track within each one of them, and if you wish to assign a specific plan to one person and another plan to another person, is a bit up to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, enough talk. <laughs> let's let's try to do a um, uh, a live a live demo and see how this works out. <laughs> All right. I hope there there will be no bugs. <laughs> So, just to give you uh, like an overview of what we'll uh, I will try to show you here. Mm -hmm. um, so, I have here a dummy project in Jira. I will showcase Jira Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, I will use two user stories: one for uh, some operation and another one for uh, like a login uh, page. Mm -hmm. There's some stories associated with an epic, like the mass operations epic. Um, the login story actually is also associated with, with an epic that I've not represented here, but um, I don't actually need to deep dive to the epic. Um, but uh, you can see here that um, all of these, uh, all these two user stories, they are assigned to version one, like the test plan and the test execution. So. The, the different iterations that I'll be creating from uh, within the plan, for, mm -hmm. they will be assigned to version one. That means that they will impact on the results of the tests uh, that I execute on the on version one. Mm -hmm. For the user story, for the sum story, uh, I'll have a manual scripted test, some a cucumber scenario, some JUnit uh, Java tests. Mm -hmm. The manual test has a precondition associated to it. So a precondition is like an abstraction of some initial condition that one or more tests must assure, like make sure that you log in you using all this, all this credential. So mm -hmm. instead of having to write that down across all tests, you can you can abstract it in a precondition. Mm -hmm. okay. On the login story, uh, and before I go to the login story, the, the Cucumber scenario, I will use Jenkins in order to execute the cucumber scenario mm -hmm. uh, even though i manage the specification in x-ray on the login story i will use a different approach for testing um, i will create uh, an exploratory testing for usability and then i will also uh, let's say combine it with some robot framework tests mm -hmm. Uh, that will uh, go over the login page and do some validations on the on the login on the login page. Mm -hmm. okay. So, a, a lot to cover. I hope that we have time to go over it. <laughs> yeah, we <yeah>. have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me just try to share your. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the first, the first thing that I want to show is about the configuration X-ray. Mm -hmm. um, just to uh, mention once again the the, the concepts. Mm -hmm. So the first main, let's say, the first main configuration here is that, is that you have is for defining like the issues that you can cover with tests. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we call it them requirements or uh, or just coverable issue types. Okay, so it can be like the epic, the story. If you have like um, a specific issue type that you wish to cover with test, like the acceptance criterion, for example, or any other feature, whatever, just drag it to the coverable issue types. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, if you wish to cover, let's say, bug issues with tests, mm -hmm. you can also drag it here and configure it to be treated as something that you can cover with tests. Okay. X-Ray understands this relation between Epic and user story. Mm -hmm. as we'll see ahead. And then we have a, like a similar uh, configuration for um, for the defects. So in Jira, uh, usually you have the bug issue type. Uh, mm -hmm. We can use configure the bug to be treated as a defect, but sometimes you may have your own uh, custom issue type like problem or whatever that you wish to treat as a defect. And mm -hmm. it's important here to map it as being 
to be treated as a defect because it will affect the reports and some parts of the application. Mm -hmm. I would say that these are the main is the main configuration that needs to be done uh, to make sure that we these entities are treated in the in the in the best way. All right. Okay. Okay. So in our project uh, that uh, I will be showcasing here, I have two user stories, one for the calculation of two numbers, then the, uh, the login. And this one, you can see that it's actually linked to an epic, the, the, the math operations epic. Mm -hmm. um, and here you can see also the test plan. So in this case, I have a test plan that I added to the scope of the sprint. Mm -hmm. I've assigned it to version one, which means that I mean to try uh, to um, to handle it as something that needs to be done in the scope of version one. Mm -hmm. It has two tests. Uh, you can see here that one of them currently is in to do because it has no uh, reported executions, and for the cucumber scenario, there's one uh, one execution that failed, and we will see uh, what happened. Uh, in a few minutes. Okay. So the test plan shows you this flat view, but I, I remember that I mentioned that you have like also uh, a more visual way of managing it. Uh, so you can also manage it using folders if you prefer and track the, the progress on a folder basis and then use these folders as means to easily schedule executions for it. So sometimes people use prefer to use like this visual board for the plan. Sometimes they just work from within the test plan issue screen uh, itself, okay? So both both approaches are fine. Um, I would say that the board scales a bit better. Okay, we have now, um, let me just show you the, the first of all, the, the user story for the calculation of two numbers. It is covered by two tests, okay? You can see that the two tests are in fact uh, issues in JIRA. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, and here you can see the calculated coverage. The calculated coverage, as I mentioned, is dynamic. It means that it's based on the results. It's based on multiple dimensions. So I can analyze it, let's say, for version one, for version two, and the, the, the results for each one of them will be different because it depends on the results that you obtain for it. Um, in this case, I will use the latest results, which will be based on the version one. And I have here like the cucumber scenario that is failing. Mm -hmm. The manual scripted test, just to show briefly how it looks, it's a typical test case composed of uh, actions and expected results. Uh, you got an action, expect results. You can add additional columns here if you want. Uh, and it's it's basically that. So you can even import it from a CSV file from, uh, from Excel using copy paste and it will automatically create the steps for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So now the, I would say that um, nothing really uh, advanced in that, in that sense, but uh, it's a typical test case scenario. Yeah. Okay, so let's use that uh, in order to, to create um, execution for our manual, manual test, first of all. So I could come here and say, I want to create a test execution just for currently the tests that are in to do in my plan. So currently in the to do should be only this one. Mm -hmm. It's, it will be assigned to Sergio uh, and well, version one. Okay, it's fine. It knows that it is going to be version one because the test plan itself is assigned to version one. So it, uh, it uh, automatically inherits the, the version from the plan. Mm -hmm. And then I have the test execution. So the test execution is like this task for running a bunch of tests. In this case, it has only one test. Each, the result for each test is what we call the test run. So uh, each time that you run a test in the scope of execution, you're gonna have a run for that test, which you can see whenever you decide to execute it. 
So I could come here and say, um, this is the execution screen. Uh, I see information about the current status of it. Uh, I can see the precondition the, where it says that I need to turn the calculator in basic mode. And then I report the results for each step. Let me pass all of that or those. And let's say that the last one failed. Okay. I can leave your like comment. Uh, it crashed. So this layout is responsive, by the way. Mm -hmm. So which which is great because it should adapt to different screen sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, you can attach some files, evidence, or even use uh, the um, the um, the control uh, the clipboard in order to uh, attach a file. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you want, you can create a defect. Okay, so the decision of creating a defect, I would say that's a separate decision. Sometimes you may decide to create the defect right away, or sometimes you may decide to create the defect sometimes afterward whenever we bring the results. But I will just create one here right away, saying that calculator crash. You can see that it automatically fill out the description with all the steps until the step that failed. And it knows that it affects version one because the execution was performed against version one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And mm -hmm. then it's linked to our test run. Okay. Okay, cool. So now our test plan as one, it was one test failing two tests failing actually the the cucumber and the manual test but yeah. let's go back here to our user story to the some operation to just to analyze the coverage you can see that it's not okay the yeah. heuristic the coverage status shows that it's not okay because at least one of the tests that covered the user story is failing in this case two tests are failing but why is the cucumber scenario? And here is where I touch a bit about BDD. Sometimes people talk about cucumber, but they are not really adopting BDD, but that's a different kind of discussion. But um, uh, with X-ray, you can imagine is the specification of the scenarios of the cucumber scenarios or outlines in Jira. So let me look at the runs that I performed for the cucumber scenario. Mm -hmm. So I have one run that shows that you can see here the gherking yeah, I can specification. See that. Yeah, yeah. And I can see here like that this example fails. Well, five plus 50 should be 56. Well, actually the bug is not in the implementation is actually in the specification. Yeah. Um, so how would, I, um, how would I fix this? Well, let me open the test. So the cucumber scenario, or cucumber scenario outline, uh, or you can even use spec flow or behave if you want, but uh, the Gherkin specification, it's here. So you can come here and basically edit the specification, fix it, and now we need to run it. Yeah. Well, the question here is how, um, what is managing X-ray and what is not managing X-ray? So what, what you manage in X-ray is the specification. Mm -hmm. The implementation, the code that uh, is related to each one of these steps mm -hmm. or Gherkin statements is stored elsewhere, like in Git, uh, Bitbucket, or uh, Bitbuck, or whatever. And you have to check out the, the code from uh, the specification from Jira, check out the code from Git, corresponding to the, the specification and then run it and report against x-ray. Mm -hmm. So what I will show you now, and let me just figure out where it is, is actually implementation how this, how this would work out in a, using Jenkins. Mm -hmm. So I have here a project in Jenkins. And just to give you an idea, I start by checking out the code that implements mm -hmm. the steps. Mm -hmm. And then I extract the specification of my uh, example using uh, 
the issue in this case the user story it will uh, extract all the cucumber scenarios related to this user story mm -hmm. and then it will run uh, the tests basically okay. in the at the end i can use a a cucumber um, a specific task from the jenkins plugin that uh, x-ray provides mm -hmm. to import the results back to to x-ray and mm -hmm. uh, report it against the existing test plan okay let let me run this and let's see if it goes well. So if, if it goes well, let's hope so. It should check out the code. Yeah, you can see here that it created a test execution in X-Ray. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that looks like. Uh, so the test, I made the test screen. Let's see the runs that I have for this test. Okay, I have the first run, which was failing, remember? And mm -hmm. now we have this one, which is passing. I can yeah. actually see it here. It's now passing, okay? Yeah. Actually, since I've linked the results back to the plan, the plan shows me this, this information. So the last, the, the last result for the Cucumber test is passing, therefore the test is considered to be passed. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So this, let's say, from the um, for the user story. The other thing that I wanted to show you, if you remember, is the the G unit uh, the G unit tests. Right. So what I will be doing here now is uh, is a bit different. So let me try to bring once again the the screen. Uh -oh. Okay, so so I have here some. I'm using in this case GitHub to store my my tests, mm -hmm. and in JUnit I have here some typical tests uh, with methods uh, with Java methods annotated uh, properly. Mm -hmm. Uh, eventually, if I use like test ng or uh, depending on the framework, you can also add here some special annotations to link the test directly to the requirements. I will show that on using using Robert. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's just simple uh, tests. And in order to have visibility of the this results, what I will be doing is actually I will run the tests in GitHub using GitHub Actions that people seem to love it. And I will report uh, that to X-Ray. So let me just show briefly how that looks like. So I have implemented here a workflow mm -hmm. in, on GitHub that is using, it check out the code, runs the tests, and then finally it submits using, submits the results back to X-Ray using a GitHub action uh, from a, a contributor from the open source community which is great because there are many contributions out there and this is also a great way to extend what what you can do with x-ray mm -hmm. so what i will be trying to do is actually let me go back here to the project so i have this test plan and gladly uh, jira cloud comes also with the support for automation so it allows you to automate certain things certain tasks so it, you can implement certain automation rules and i've previously configured uh, my my project to have a one uh, automation rule mm -hmm. that will do a post request to uh, github mm -hmm. it will pass the test plan it will run the tests on github and report the results back to x-ray Hopefully this will work. <laughs> Let's see how it works. So it is now uh, triggering GitHub. Let me now go to GitHub side. Yeah. Actions. Here it goes. So we can see that it it triggers the workflow or the workflow on GitHub. Mm -hmm. It should be starting the job in, in a few seconds. So it's going to check out the code, uh, get a, uh, go over the Maven dependencies, run the tests, and then use the GitHub action in order to uh, to push the results back to, to, to X-Ray. Mm -hmm. Let's just take a bit. Okay. 
it seems interesting so far, AJ. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm learning something new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what, uh, 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 when I was doing uh, these tutorials uh, uh, for X-ray, uh, uh, I found it quite interesting that people nowadays use um, use uh, uh, GitHub Actions in order to implement uh, CI/CD. Mm -hmm. It's an alternate approach uh, to traditional CI/CD tools like Jenkins and others out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's if you are already working on with GitHub, um, it's a it's a great way to in, embed directly uh, the CI CD directly on the on the code on the same place where the code lives. So right. well this is taking a bit a bit on the on the GitHub end, but I will show you some something that I've run previously just to show how this looks like. Mm -hmm. So it will go through the actions that I've specified so so the steps mm -hmm. and then it will submit a, um, the report to X-Ray and that will create a test execution that I can then track in X-Ray. All right. Let me, let me just double check. Well, it's getting queued, but we can come back to it later on, okay? All right. Um, okay, so now back to the project. Mm -hmm. uh, on the on the users on the login, uh, let's say user story. Uh, mm -hmm. I also wanted to 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 mention here and use it as the, the means to showcase exploratory testing. Mm -hmm. So, what I have here is a, a usability test. So I've created a test beforehand. Mm -hmm. Let me just show how that looks like. Mm -hmm. So a test in X-ray uh, can be one of uh, several types, but you can also create your own custom type. In, in this case, I've created one type that is called exploratory. Mm -hmm. That has just like a definition that where you can have, a, for example, your charter. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, you can execute your tests, uh, uh, you can explore, you, you can perform your exploratory session using um, um, uh, an exploratory app called uh, X-Ray Exploratory App, which is a free application mm -hmm. that you install either in Windows, uh, uh, Linux, or Mac. Okay. Uh, it's like a companion app to assist you taking screenshots, taking notes. So uh, how would that work out? Uh, so you could come, for example, here to the test and say that you want to execute it using exploratory app. Mm -hmm. You're going to say that, okay, I'm going to test um, using um, testing the version one of the system okay. using, for example, the Chrome browser, and it will now launch the exploratory app on my app. On, okay. on my desktop. Mm -hmm. So let me try to show it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So, and I will now open the, the page so we can play a bit with it. So it receives application, receives the context that I have from Jira. Mm -hmm. it, I got here like the, the charter mm -hmm. uh, and it knows that his purpose is to cover the that user story that exists in Jira, the, the okay. login. Yeah. And I will, I can now start my session. Okay. So let's start the session. I can choose to record a certain uh, desktop screen, for example, like this one. Mm -hmm. And then I can play a bit around it. So here, what I will try to do is just to showcase a bit about how this work would work out. Mm -hmm. So for example, here, I could see that eventually, well, eventually the this login page, 
uh, as a problem with this locking button, which is too too small. Yeah. Um, so probably I can use that uh, as a something that I want to report. Mm -hmm. I take a screenshot, so I don't need any other tool to take the screenshot. Oh. I can say okay. Mm -hmm. This is probably uh, I could I will consider this a, a problem. Mm -hmm. Login button too small on mobile, perhaps, and um, I could e eventually have here like an arrow, uh, for example, something like this. Okay. Okay. Right. So better explanation. And, yeah. So okay. you can add this visual notation. You can also like crop, uh, uh, crop the the screen if you want. So you can do a bunch of things there. Mm -hmm. And if you if you want, you can create a defect right away from here in Jira. So oh. if I want, I could say create a defect mm -hmm. and say okay. This, so the login button too small. Okay. And that would create a, a defect in, in Jira right away. Right. Then I can keep, I can also do uh, other stuff. So okay. I could come here and say, oh, maybe, maybe this is not a username. Maybe isn't this like a, should it be like an email? Mm -hmm. So eventually I can take, uh, Record audio. Okay. Hey, maybe maybe this is a. This should not be a username. Maybe this should be an email. It's just a dummy idea. Okay. Uh, and say. Username. And well, I can keep doing taking either notes or on text, screenshots, recording video, or. So and all, in all the end, of these things are adding into your. Uh, defect uh, where you want to log. It will be recorded in my session locally. And mm -hmm. now before I, uh, I submit the session, I can decide what I want to submit to Jira and to X-Ray. Okay. okay. Uh, actually, the X-Ray exploratory app, you don't even need to, to have X-Ray. But of course, if you have it, you can report it to against the, the entities that X-Ray provides and okay. provide their, let's say, additional value. Mm -hmm. Before submitting, I can see like a timeline of what I did. I can take things out or uh, oh, I, see. I can you, review. You can select out of it. Yeah. And oh. I can say, okay, I can consider this session like failed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it will report on the coverage in a negative way. I can export this to a zip file. It will contain like all the, all the screenshots and the PDF with this timeline. Or if I want, I can submit this to X-Ray. And at this moment, it will create test execution in Jira, and it will create a run for the for my exploratory test that I can track. Um, can I can I, that I can track in Jira? So let me open it. It created here. You can see like the the run for my exploratory session. Uh, it contains the, the audio that I recorded, the screenshot. Um, it also contains the, um, the, a PDF of the session. So sometimes people just love this to have these kind of PDFs with the, like a timeline. Of course, the audio won't be here, but <laughs> uh, you have an idea of the things that you reported. So for teams that are also uh, doing exploratory testing, I would say that this is uh, something valuable. If I now refresh my, let's say, usability test side, you can see that it has like one run failed. So if now I go to the login application, user story, mm -hmm. it's it reported as not okay because my exploratory testing was reported as failed. Okay, yeah. Cool. 
Yeah. Okay. So another another thing that I wanted to briefly show you is on also on a, another aspect of automation. So imagine that I have some tests implemented, uh, some Selenium or a kind of tests implemented for the login application, mm -hmm. uh, which by the way, is that one that I was showing you, sorry, moments ago. So let me just show you the, the code. Okay. How it would like look like. So this is Robot Framework uh, implemented test. So mm -hmm. here you can see like the test for a positive case, mm -hmm. and I can tag the test scenario with the issue key of the user story in Jira. Mm -hmm. And well, I can have like a bunch of tests all tagged with that. So the only thing that I have to do in order to have visibility of this, and I will use like the command line just to show what this looks like mm -hmm. is to do a uh, invoke the rest api in order mm -hmm. to import the results so what i will do let me just show you the script because it's no it's no um hidden secret here so i will run tests using robot and then mm -hmm. i will import the results of my firefox tests then i will run the same test but using chrome let mm -hmm. me run this This should start opening the, the, the browser, going over the tests that I've implemented using Robot. Mm -hmm. The thing here is, to, is, well, the test automation engineers or anyone that is going to implement a test automation doesn't have to worry that much with Jira. Basically, the, they just have to tag the test cases with the, the user stores that those tests cover. Mm -hmm. And finally, import the results. And importing the result is something something very easy for you to achieve because you just have to do like a post request to the REST API. Mm -hmm. It's nothing more than that, OK? okay. So this is, should be completing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so one test execution created. And I have here another one created here. So let's see how this looks like in in Jira. Uh, OK, so let me go to the user story. You can see that the user story now is covered by the usability test that was already there, mm -hmm. but also it's covered by additional tests. They, they were automatically provisioned in Jira. So you don't have to do anything. You just need to submit the results, and X-Ray will do the magic for you. And it will link the test to the user story using that tag that I show you mm -hmm. earlier mm -hmm. that contains the issue keys that of the user story. And okay. well, here you can see that they are passing. Mm -hmm. But since there will be this usability test failing, well, it's not OK. But if I look this, for example, I can analyze the coverage for Chrome. I can analyze it for Firefox. You can see that, okay, Firefox is different. The coverage is different because I have not run the usability test on Firefox. So it shows me as not run. So this is like the one of the main things about this coverage capabilities that you can analyze the results from multiple perspectives. Okay. Cool. So let's see if meanwhile, the test that we run, the, the test for, um the JUnit tests are already here. Okay, they are. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the workflow has run, and you see they are the JUnit tests, they were automatically a provision and added to the plan. Okay. Okay. So now that uh I've covered let's say the main parts, I want to go over the reporting. And okay. the reporting. Uh, I would say that X-Ray provides like these different ways of reporting that also fit different kinds of needs for different uh, users. Sometimes people want to have like say reports in Word or PDF or uh, things like that because they need to deliver to their manager or even to their own customers. Yeah, so definitely. you don't have to wor worry about that because that can take you lots of time uh, because X-Ray has like this built-in document generator that you can use. 
and it comes with like a set of templates built in, in Word that contain like placeholders. Um, and basically then you just need to pick that you want to generate a PDF report. Mm -hmm. You can download the, um, the template, you can customize the template to your needs. Mm -hmm. And this is a great way uh, uh, to generate these reports if you really need to, to have them. So sometimes we know that teams uh, need to have this for certain reasons, but uh, if, if it, that's the case, the, the good thing is that they can automate that. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, the report with whatever layout you have with all the results. Um, you can also have like the run results and all the comments and all that can be in, in, a, in, in a document, a Word or a PDF that you can share. Oh, wow. It's this very detailed one. Yeah, yeah. This one is very detailed. Yeah. Um, another, uh, let's say, way of reporting is, of course, by using the built-in reports. <laughs> I prefer to use those because those are a bit more agile. Mm -hmm. um, and the first, the first report that I want to show is the test coverage. So this one is like the high-level overview uh, where you can um, where you can uh, uh, evaluate the status of your release. So mm -hmm. what will be shown on the chart mm -hmm. are your your requirements, so your user stories, your epics, mm -hmm. and how they are on a specific version eventually on a specific environment. Okay. And if you analyze that for a, another version or for another environment, the results will be different, of course. Mm -hmm. And here I'm grouping them for, let's say, my user stories by priority. I could group them by uh, status, by, um, by component of the system. Uh, I like to see them by priority because if you use priorities on the stories, then it's a great way to see how like the percentage of completeness by, by each, let's say, level of uh, re requirements. Mm -hmm. And then you can drill down and see here, for example, oh, let's see the ones that are okay. okay. For example, these ones, or here you can see the, the information at the epic level mm -hmm. and at the user story level. And with this, it's a great way for you to decide whether to this is ready to be delivered or not. Well, and if, eventually also to analyze the tests, the, the stories that are not covered by tests. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people also want to have this kind of traceability. Mm -hmm. This is usually is really important. Mm -hmm. So you can see the requirements back to the back to the defects, how, how they are related. Mm -hmm. uh, and with X-ray, you can see all of that. And you can do this analysis on a specific version, on a specific environment. So once again, you can analyze the mm -hmm. Let's say you are deliberate. Okay. I can see, drill down in it, see that, okay, this epic as this user story that is not okay because one of the tests is failing because one, for this test, the last run was failed and it was reported this defect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, with, with these things, you can uh, quickly pick out the test, that, the requirements that have not, uh, no runs yet for, for the test or the ones that are not yet covered. And right. as I mentioned, this same analysis, you can make for a specific environment. Mm -hmm. And the, the results for a, another environment will be slightly different, of course, because it depends on the result, on the what you reported for that specific environment. Right, right. That's true. Yeah. Uh, another, let's say, way of doing reporting is using by using Jira dashboards, and mm -hmm. X-Ray provides like a bunch of gadgets that you can use in the dashboards mm -hmm. um, to have like overall information about the runs, uh, like the number of runs passing, failing or the overall test results on a pie chart, mm -hmm. listing the test plans, for example, in case you have like different test plans and show information about the test plans. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also eventually show the coverage for a specific version to see like an, uh, from a bird's eye perspective, the status of your project. Mm -hmm. So this is a, let's say for me, 
if you are working in a scope of our project, this is like, let's say the most useful gadget because it gives you this bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. Then of course you can see it, let's say the more, the, the more details, details like uh, using other gadgets like this one for listing the, the test executions that shows, let's say each iteration that you report each build, the results for each build, or if you want to list all the, just the, uh, the runs, you all can also list the runs. Or if you want to list like a bunch of requirements using some sort of criteria and how those requirements are for a specific person, you can also do that. Okay, okay. Yeah, a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Sorry if I uh, get too much exciting <laughs> and show you just too much information. All right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, once again, um, the X-ray exploratory app. So that, uh, let's say, site companion app that I've shown you earlier. Yeah. It's available, it's available for free. You can use it no matter if you have an X-ray or not installed in your Jira instance. But as I've showed you, um, if you all have uh, X-ray, then you can have, let's say, visibility of your exploratory testing results alongside your test automation and or your typical manual test cases in Jira and use X-ray as like a single source of truth. Okay, yeah, of course. And I'm ready now for any questions that you may have, uh, Ajay. Yeah, yeah, we have a lot of questions. Uh, let me put it <laughs> <one by> one. <laughs> so uh, as we have seen that you were talking about CI CD tool and you also have shown us uh, like X-ray can be integrated with uh, Jenkins. So yeah. any other tool uh, in terms of CI CD, which X-Ray supports? Yeah, actually um, a bunch of them. So let me just uh, try to show. Well, uh, give me one second. Mm -hmm. So in our extensive documentation I have here, Integration, so for example, for X-Ray Cloud, you can find here integrations with a bunch of tools like Jenkins. So there's a free plugin for Jenkins. Mm -hmm. You can also use um, a, a free plugin for Team City that we have, another one for uh, um, for Bamboo. I, I think that currently the Bamboo one uh, uh, only supports X-Ray on Jira server, mm -hmm. but You'll see your instructions for GitHub using, for example, that open source GitHub action. Okay. You got your uh, instructions for Azure Bitbucket pipelines. So no matter what kind of CI CD tool you choose to use, you okay. can easily integrate the test automation results back from that tool. All right, all right. There are a lot of, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So coming to next thing, uh, any frameworks, uh, I would say, what kind of frameworks, you know, like are supported by X-ray uh, if we look into those things, yeah. In terms of the uh, test automation? Yeah, yeah. So in, term, in terms of uh, automation, I think here the best is to actually show briefly the documentation. We support a bunch of frameworks that uh, based on the report that they generate, like G-Unit, TestNG, N-Unit, X unit, Robot framework, Cucumber, um, Behave, Specflow. We have our own format if you wish to report. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I think uh, we have around 60 or 50 uh, tutorials. Uh, 50 or 60 tutorials here in our documentation just on automation oh. using all sorts of reports. So yeah. So this is something really cool that uh, you can actually explore in our technical documentation site. Uh, I call it tutorials, tips, and tricks. It may be somehow hidden here in the documentation, uh, TTTT, but it contains a bunch of tutorials. Yeah. Uh, Playwright, Cypress, whatever. Okay. All right, all right. Okay, coming <laughs> to the next question. Uh, uh, so any... Query language like uh, does X-ray support uh, for filtering results, whatever we are looking forward. 
Uh, excellent question. So, um, um, in in Jura, you have Jake Well, Jake right. Well, yeah. which is like the way for um, for uh, for querying uh, stuff in Jira. Mm -hmm. X-ray provides um, some capabilities for the Jake Well for the entities that are based at Jira. Mm -hmm. as Jira issues, such as tests and uh, things like that. Yeah, for example, using uh, this, these examples. Mm -hmm. uh, for cloud, uh, due to the way that how the Jira cloud works, uh, we don't have, like, say, yet, uh, because it's not possible, JQL functions. Mm -hmm. But for example, for the server uh, data center product, for X-ray server and data center, we have like 30 JQL functions that allow you to uh, interact with um, with X-ray. Mm -hmm. These two products, and this is maybe worth mentioning, X-ray for Jira server data center and X-ray cloud, they are very similar, but they are actually the distinct products in the sense that they are built using different kinds of technologies. The way that they are deployed is different. Um, so. And then also the, let's say, Jira server and data center and Jira cloud, they are technology-wise, technology they are dif different. So the things that you can do uh, are a bit different, okay? But as soon as we have the means to extend this further in, in cloud, we will be able to deliver more capabilities here. All right, all right, great. Okay, uh, coming to next question, and that would be related to skill. Uh, so what kind of skill should today's tester have? Oh, great question. <laughs> yeah. That is more, let's say, um, a background test uh, kind of question on the, on, on how we should approach testing. And uh, remember that, uh, let me just try to pick here, not this slide, but one of the first slides I have here. Mm -hmm. Give me just one thing because I think it all relates a bit with this slide, right? Yeah. And of course, you, you wish a tester should have like a, a bunch of skills. We call I call it like the back package of knowledge because mm -hmm. it means that we we as a tester. Um, have to understand about the product, about technologies, about architecture, mm -hmm. um, about also how the team works, and what are the constraints. We, but I, I think um, collaboration is a real, a, a good communication is a, a, a skill that is really important nowadays because we really need to improve testing throughout the team. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to mention like curiosity <laughs> as um, not curiosity, the robot, but curiosity uh, as one of the main skills and mm -hmm. like this eagerness, this willing, willing, uh, willingness to learn uh, the, the, um, the ability to learn, wishing to learn one of the main skills because we as testers need to know a bit a bit about uh, everything, mm -hmm. um, but what we don't need to be perfect in every single, let's say, domain. But we need to to be uh, open to learn, right. and uh, and that implies that uh, we need to be explorers in that sense. We need to be to have curiosity in order to uh, deep dive. Um, into the problems and try to see how we can overcome them. Right. So curiosity and and I would say curiosity and slash learning um, uh, for me are the uh, are, are, are the main skills that are important for a, for a tester. That's absolutely true. Okay. All right. Uh, coming to last but not the least uh, question for this uh, estate session. So your words of wisdom for today's tester. My words of wisdom. Yeah. So uh, I would say that, and, and picking on the last topic that we were discussing is that a tester needs to 
to evolve, to be able to evolve. Um, and that implies that we, uh, we need to keep learning, mm -hmm. need to engage with others. So testers, one thing that I really love uh, in testing is that if you go out there and people like you uh, that interact a lot with, in the community, mm -hmm. that engage with uh, others in the community. The community in the testing space is quite open. So we are all, let's say, juniors in knowledge because there is always uh, something else to learn. And the testing community is really open to help others learning. So there are many communities out there. Mm -hmm. uh, on online events, on uh, Slack, on, well, YouTube, uh, on Twitter. Um, so no matter if you, the challenge that you may have, don't be afraid of it mm -hmm. because people uh, will be more than glad to help you out, to try to help you out, to try to give you pointers mm -hmm. because all the challenges that we face, someone has probably faced the, the same change, challenge elsewhere. Right. So we, we can try to overcome it. Mm -hmm. And and that's, that's a, uh, I would say that is mainly that. So be open to learn, be open to try, not just tools, but to read more about uh, testing, how to make testing in different ways, but also to try different, let's say, things within the team. So the pursuing testing is not just let's say an individual goal. Mm -hmm. It's like um, a team kind of goal. Mm -hmm. uh, we can only actually deliver value mm -hmm. if we are able to deliver value as a team. Uh, mm -hmm. And that implies that we have to work better together mm -hmm. uh, in order to improve quality in so many ways, mm -hmm. even before writing tests or automated scripts or exploring the, the software. We can we should try to discuss things, try to uh, have better understanding about what are we trying to achieve with the products that we are trying to build. All right, all right, that's true. Okay, uh, so Sergio, uh, I would say, you know, like, uh, finally we have reached to closure of this wonderful session presented by you on X-Ray and sharing your deep dive knowledge over it. Uh, anything else you want to share before we wrap up the session? Uh, well, anything, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. Um, and it was really great here to be here. Mm -hmm. um, as I was mentioned, you uh, mentioned um, moments ago, mm -hmm. I'm also part of the testing community, first of all. Mm -hmm. So you can find me on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, on also on my personal uh, website where once upon a, once uh, often we I vlog, but not that often as mm -hmm. I wish to do. But uh, you can reach out to me, and uh, even if you have like say questions, not just X-ray related, if you want to uh, some sort of uh, help or discuss ideas, I'm free. Mm -hmm. I'm open to that. Uh, um, if, if my time allows to do so. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Th thanks, Sergio. Uh, thanks for doing so. Uh, thanks, Sergio, for joining us over STAT and sharing your knowledge based on your experience in your tenure in IT industry so far. Hope our audience would have learned a lot of things from your session, and we would be expecting more such deep dive sessions in upcoming days from you as well. Uh, we wish you all the best for upcoming projects on which you're working on, and thanks for being part of our estate journey. Thank you, Ajay. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you.